Hallelujah. We thank God you have tuned into this message by David Entry and Harris Church. No hand can help you with the fulfillment of your destiny but the Word of God. May God hand align with you further into your destiny through this Word. Job chapter 2 verse 28, it says, And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. Shall we all read it out loud together? Let's go on. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon your fle- all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. Father, what we don't know, teach us. Where we are not, take us. And who we are not, make us. Through the power of your word, as your word is taught, let grace be caught. Let faith be born. And let glory be shown. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. For your information, in my prayer, the Lord laid on my heart that this church carries the coming year is a year of revival. 2015 was a year of revival. 2016 was a year of great awakening. 20, I think 17 was a year of greater awakening. And now God has brought us back. The revival started 2014 and 2024. 10 years on, we have come back to our year of revival. Revival simply means enliven or to make, give life to somebody, something. So to make alive again, introduce fresh life into something. That is what revival means. So revival means to bring revive. In fact, interestingly, three days ago at faith seminar, I actually gave the theme Fide Viva. But just when we are about to get close to the, the on the just I think when I was boarding the plane from Ghana on Thursday. I just felt a sharp edge in my spirit to change it to the just shall live by faith. But fide viva was boiling. Fide is faith. Sola fide, faith alone, is Latin. Fide means faith. Viva means life or living. So vive, revive, to revive, to reliven. So when we talk about revive, uh, is to introduce life into something. But if I'm alive, why do I need revival? Because of Adam's sin, Romans chapter 5 verse 12, Bible says, death pass to all men. Oh. Yeah, all. Oh. Romans chapter 5 verse 12 says that, therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world, and death entered the world through sin. And that's Death spread to all men. So, two things you notice here. Things are dying and men are dying. Human beings are dying. Creation is dying. That is why scientists can see that creation is going down. So they are calling for meetings. In fact, there have been a lot of international meetings by huge UN delegates. And the meetings, most of the time, is about a woman called Mother Nature. To try and rescue nature, which is a good attempt because it's going out of control. So in Romans chapter 8, verse 19 to 23, he said, even creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sun. Romans chapter 8, verse 19, he says that for the earnest expectation of not only human beings, creation eagerly awaits for the revealing, King James, keep me on King James, for the manifestation of the sons of God. Creation is waiting. Sons of God, you are the ones who have life. Manifest. Manifest. Some of us, your family is waiting for your manifestation. Some of us, your community is waiting for your manifestation. You think you don't have anything to offer. Try the Bible. When life of God comes into you, it doesn't stay in you alone. It doesn't stay with you. The life of God is replicative. It's productive. It's continuous. That's why God blessed them and said, be fruitful 
Multiply Genesis chapter 1, verse 28. So, when you come into contact with light from God, it doesn't just stay with you alone. It begins to affect people around you and things around you as well. Life. Life. That's why revival becomes necessary. Revival is not only when churches are growing, but every time churches are growing and churches are becoming lively or receiving the life of God, it begins to affect marriages. It begins to affect education. It begins to affect the economy. It begins to affect government. It begins to affect every aspect of society, including entertainment and sports. When churches are receiving the life of God, it doesn't only stay in the church. It spills over. In the book of Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Ghost came, it didn't only stay in the upper room where they were praying. The impact and the effect spilled over to all of Jerusalem. Revival is needed in our churches. The prophet Ezekiel, God gave him a vision. He said he was taken into a valley of dry bones, Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1, said, And the hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones. And he said, Lo, the bones were very dry and very many. That is depiction of current lifestyle or current society. Societies are getting drier and drier. Mental health is on the ascendance. Divorces are, are on the ascendance. Cohabitation and fornication and pornography and crime is on the ascendance. You might think that the more we are getting civilized, the less we will commit crime. But that's why we need rubber. Son of man! And the voice asked the prophet, Son of man, can these bones leave? I have good news for somebody. You look around you and they feel it's like dry bones. There doesn't seem to be hope for you. The devil is a liar. Not when you can encounter God through his word. Not when you can encounter. There's no human being who is alive and is completely hopeless. Your case is not completely hopeless. With God, Bible says that God commands light to shine out of darkness. Ah. No, he didn't say he shines light into darkness. Oh. No, there are two. I'm talking about 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6. He says that for God, who commanded light to shine out of. How can you command light to. You, what you do is when there's darkness, you shine light into it. But he said, God, God, he commands light to shine out of that. That means that you don't get anywhere where your case is completely hopeless with God. It's, it, can, it's, it doesn't happen like that. It doesn't happen like that. There is hope for your future. Oh, I have I got good news for someone that in 2024, if you can embrace God's spirit and his word, you will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Shout, I believe. There is hope for your future. Tell someone there's hope for your future. There's hope. Son of man, can these dry bones live? And he said, Lord, you know. And he said, command the bones and tell them bones live. And he said, verse 5, I prophesy. He said, prophesy. I prophesied as I was commanded. He spoke. When he heard God's word, he spoke it out. God's word is not just meant for you to keep it. It's not for education. Yeah, oh, I want to know, I want to know, I want to know. God's word is not Google. <laughs> God's word is bread. God's word is spirit. John chapter 6 verse 63 says, The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And like Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2, And the spirit entered me whilst he spake to me. In Acts chapter 10 verse 44, Whilst Peter yet spake this word, the spirit fell. Spirit, the Spirit of God works with the Word of God. The Spirit of God works with the Word of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's important to understand that the Word of God is the chief agent through which the Spirit of God can enter into any situation. 
Don't oversee your life going down when you can speak the word of God into your life. No, don't supervise the demise of your financial life, of your marital life, of your health. Don't say it's because of my age, things are going down. There are people who are far older than you and don't have your kind of weakness. They don't have your kind of sickness. There are people who live to be 90, others live to be over 100. And yet others, when they are 40, they are already dying. Don't embrace those kind of philosophy that anyway, when you are 40, now that I'm 35, I know I'm old, and ah, ah, my palpitations, I'm dying, I'm dying, I'm dying. Some people, many, it's not your, many people, not only one or two, many people have crossed 70 with ease. So why don't you change your status and and enroll yourself into those categories through the word of God? Son of man, can these bones live? He said, prophesy to the bones. Speak to your future. That's why we are here. I need to preach God's word so you can have something to say to 2024. Don't go and be saying, I wish, I wish. It's not necessary. Wishes don't work. Wishes don't work. You need the word of God in your mouth. Speak the word. We need the word. So, revival, God sends his prophet in the spirit to the valley of dry bones, and he says that, can this bone, he said prophesy. And after he prophesied, from verse 7, in Ezekiel chapter 37, from verse 6, the Bible says that flesh came on them, and there was flesh, bone to bone. After he prophesied, bones began moving. Bones began moving. There's no technology powerful like the word of God. Bones began moving because he spoke God's word into a situation. When he spoke God's word, he had into a situation. Bones began, Bible said, bone to bone. Verse 6. But bone to bone has moved. Just like someone, you, you've been believing God for a child. And you got pregnant, you had a child. But it's one thing having a child. Another thing having your child being healthy and doing well. Mm-hmm. It's one thing having a husband or a wife. Some of the husbands, sometimes it looks like it's not worth it. <laughs> oh, yes. Some of the wives, it looks like it's not worth it. But it's a journey of no return. You can be married, and yet there's no life in your marriage. You can finish university and finish with A stars, and yet there's no life in your certificate. What's the usefulness of, of a certificate that can secure a job? So he says that they didn't have life. Look at verse 7. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. Let's go to the verse 8 quickly. Verse 8 says that, And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came upon them, and the skin covered them above, but there was no breath in them. There was no breath in them. And then the word, I like God's word. He, kada shada bahada, say, ka yabasa. One thing I like about God is never void of words. Because he's a speaking God. When God wants to help you, he'll connect you with his word. Because God is always speaking. It depends on those who are listening. So, Bible says that the word of God came to him again. And he said, prophesy. He says that, then he said, unto me, prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, that says that, no, that's this is not my opinion, this is God. You better start embracing the word of God and put your opinion aside. When it comes to what will work in your life, what will force things to work in your life, is not your opinion. It's God's word. God, that's why Satan will try to convince you that this is not God's word. Because if he can convince you, he has permanently secured your imprisonment. Yeah. Oh, yes. oh, yes. So, he said, prophesy. And he said, prophesy and say to the wind, four winds, oh, come from the four winds, oh, and breathe upon this land that they may live. And guess what? Watch this, the next verse. So, I prophesied as I was commanded, and breath came into them, and they lived. That's revival. Life came. So the breath is what brings the life. There are things, you may have the systems, but you don't have the life. That's what I was talking about. You can be married, but there's no life. You can have a family. Some of us, you know, you just even last week, see what happened in your family. Christmas, when the family comes together, that's when the, is the worst time of your life. You can't stand your brother. You can't stand your sister. You can't stand your f- husband. 
You can't stand your wife and certainly can't stand your ex with whom you have a child. You can't stand. But I believe I'm speaking the word of God to somebody that life is coming back into your life. And so, quickly, when we talk about revival, we are talking about the supply of the Spirit of God. That the Spirit of God is the chief agent of life supply. That's the supply of the Spirit of God. And so, we saw how the Spirit of God came on these bones and they lived. Jesus Christ, when he came and he was being introduced by John the Baptist, very interesting, I noticed something. Theologians call something the synoptic gospel. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. John is slightly different. But Matthew, Mark, Luke, sin optics, sin, synchronized, synonymous, same, right? So sin optic, opt, optician has to do with sight. So they see things from a similar angle. So the synoptic gospels, most of the things they report on are from the same or similar angle. John comes from a different angle. And so there are things that are recorded in the synoptic gospels, but are not recorded in John. There are things that are recorded in John, but not in the synoptic gospels. However, there are core things that are recorded in all of them, like the death, the burial, and resurrection of Christ. But the birth of Christ was not recorded in John, neither was it recorded in Mark, because it's not really critical, even though it's essential. But the death of Christ was recorded in all of them. And I found out that the supply, the introduction of Jesus Christ was also recorded in all of them. In the book of Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, John the Baptist said, I'm baptizing with water, but there's one coming after me. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. John was introducing revival. In Matthew chapter, that's chapter 3, verse 11, and in, in Luke chapter 3, verse 16, he said the same thing. It's there recorded there. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. In Mark chapter 1, verse 8, there's one coming after me. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 1, verse 33, there's one coming after me. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. But look at what is even surprising. All the four Gospels recorded it and Acts, Acts, the book of Acts also added to it. In Acts chapter 1, verse 5, it refers to how you'll be baptized with the Holy Spirit and fire. Acts chapter 1, verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from now. And not only once was it recorded in Acts. In Acts chapter 11, verse 15 and verse 16, is there Peter was giving a report. He said, as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them. I see the power of the Holy Ghost falling on somebody. I see the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon somebody. I see the healing power of God coming upon somebody. Shout yes! He says, as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them. Don't underestimate what God can do through a powerful preaching. Those of you who say I don't like preaching, you don't like the life of God. He said, as I preached, as I was spoke Acts chapter 11 verse 15 as I spoke the Holy Ghost fell on them as at the beginning these were Gentiles in the house of Cornelius the Jews didn't expect that to happen but they heard the words of God and that happened and somebody's hearing the words of God I see the power of the Holy Ghost come up. and he says but look at the next verse verse 16 is where I'm going he says that then ha Let's all read that aloud from the screen. Then, remember I, the word of the Lord, how he, that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall, oh, but ye shall, I can't hear you reading really aloud, but, louder, but, one of the chief reasons why Jesus came is not only to die, but that human beings will be filled with the Holy Spirit. That is the beginning of revival. So Joel said, he said that it shall come to pass afterwards. Don't just read the Bible and read it like you are reading newspaper. You have to take notice of some words. What's the meaning of afterwards? After what? 
Afterwards, what? Is after the work of the cross, now all men are qualified if they can come to Christ for a baptism of the Holy Spirit. He said, it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters. When the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you begin to speak life. Did you see that? What do you see in Ezekiel? You see dry bones. What are you supposed to do with dry bones? Don't give it to the dog. Prophets, I do it. <laughs> yeah. Don't say this is useless. What you th- people think is useless, if you can put it in the hands of someone with an anointing, anointing of God, and ability to speak into it, they will speak life back into it. Sister, I know things are going funny in your life in your child's life, in your marital pursuit, but don't just say, I'm growing, no one is coming. Oh, shut up. Speak the word of God. Speak God's word. But what should I say? Listen to good preaching. You will know what to say when you hear a saint preacher. He said, when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. So your old man shall see dreams. It's not only young people like Joseph who can dream and dream again. Your old man shall dream dreams. And your young man shall see visions. Somebody seeing visions. Somebody seeing visions. Somebody seeing visions. Seeing visions. Thank you, Jesus. You shall see visions. So, that's the promise of Jesus Christ. The promise Jesus gave. That's why he died on the cross. The reason why he died on the cross, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having been made a curse for us, for it is written, curse is anyone who hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon us, the Gentiles, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. Through faith. Yeah, that's why he came. So that the end result is you can be the worst person anyone can know. If you come to Jesus, you are qualified for revival. Amen. Revival means that your life is not wasting anymore. Amen. I don't know who I'm talking to. Things have been very bad for you. But I'm announcing to you that your glorious days are ahead. Your best days are not behind you. Your best days are ahead of you. If you believe it, shout yes. yes. So, quickly, as I run up and we, we get into prayer, because somebody, you have to cry out for God. Yes. So, watch this. So, he says that you'll be baptized by the Spirit. The Spirit of God is coming upon you. The Spirit of God, can, can you remember in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, God formed man from the dust of the earth and he was lifeless. And the Bible said, God breathed. <laughs> The breath of God, the breath of the Ruach Elohim, the breath of God is the Ruach, the Ruach, the breath of God. The breath of God is the life-giving agent. So in, in Jesus Christ in resurrection, Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45, he became a life-giving spirit. A life-giving spirit. When it comes to you, revival. Now watch this. In John chapter 7, verse 37, on the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood with a loud voice and he said, if any man test, let him come to me and drink. For as the scriptures have said, whoever believes in me, verse 38, out of his belly, out of, oh, 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 ah. He said, whoever believes in me, as the scriptures have said, out of his belly shall flow rivers. So now, verse 39 says, this spake he concerning the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit comes on you one, but it doesn't just stay on you. It flows through you. So it takes us to the book of Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 1. He said, he took me to the house of God or the temple of God and at the threshold I saw river, stream, 
water coming from the threshold, the center, there's water. And he said the water flowed. It flowed. And look at the verse 6 because of time. Jump to verse 6 and let me show you something. He says that this water that flowed, what happened? And he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return to the brink of the river. Where is the river going? Watch this. Now, when I had returned, behold, at the bank of the river were very many trees on one side and the other. Oh, let's go on. Verse 8 says, Then he said unto me, These waters issued out towards the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be that water, that river that is coming, flowing from the temple of God, is going to places and beginning to introduce life. So look at the next verse. It's even getting a bit more interesting. And it shall come to pass that everything that liveth, which moveth, whithersoever the river shall come, shall live. And, and there shall be a very great multitude of fish, because these waters shall come thither, for they shall be healed, and everything shall live. Without the, everywhere the river gets to life, everywhere the river gets to life. What river are we talking about? The river that is flowing from the one who is connected to Christ. So revival is not just stopping with you. Our society will see life. Your family will see life. I see revival coming to your home. So, when we say the year is a year of revival, we are talking about an outpour of the Spirit of God. When we say a year of revival, we mean, and I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh. A year of revival. Send us revival, oh Lord. Yes. Quickly, quickly. Revival, you can't start a revival. Revival is when God himself goes to a place and sends life. So you can't command God to go somewhere. But there are things you can do to prepare the grounds for God to show up. Some of the things you can do, number one, is to be aware that revival or supply of the Spirit is a promise of God. You must know it so you can cash in on it. When you go to God and say, God, you promise in your word, then that means God is under obligation to fulfill his promise. Number two, if you want to see a revival, it means you have to desire it. There are people who don't care. All they care about is their jobs. Some people who don't care, all they care about is their studies. Some all they care about is their houses. Some all they care about is their children. Oh, you limit what God can do with your life. Because God doesn't call you just because of you. He calls you to pass something through you to others. To pass something through you to others. And so, if you want to see revival, number one is you must be aware. You must know that it's a promise. Number two, you must desire to have it. Number three, you must ask. As God revive us again. Revive us again. In Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2, it says, Revive us in the midst of the years. Revive us, O Lord. I have heard thy speech and I was afraid. Oh Lord, revive your works in the midst of the years. You cry out for revival in Psalm 80, verse 18. Revive us, O oh Lord, or make us alive again, O oh Lord. In Psalm 85, verse 6, send revival, O oh Lord. Revive, revive. Some people must determine that I'm calling on the name of God. He said in Psalm 2, verse 8, ask of me and I'll give you the nations. Revival. Jesus himself taught us in the book of Luke, chapter 11. Verse 11 to 13, he says that if your son asks for bread, will you give him a stone? If they ask for fish, will you give him a snake? If they ask for egg, will you give him a scorpion? Then he said, verse 13, if you, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your sons, watch this, how much more shall your heavenly father give the spirit to those who ask? You see the word ask there? Those who ask. Revival, we have to desire and then start asking. And number four, last point, if you want to provoke revival, you have to learn how to walk by faith. When God says move, when God says move, move. When anytime God wants to bless you, he'll bring you an instruction. That is only religion who tells you God will do anything he wants to do. No! God doesn't work unilaterally on this earth. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. God does not work unilaterally on this. That's why we have gathered here. 
We have gathered here. If God would do it without us, then stay home. He would do it, but he won't do it. Some people say, oh God, look at what I'm going through. I don't understand. What have you done? You have to look for what God is saying to do, and then you do it, and you see God move. If you don't work with God, God can work for you. One thing that God is looking for is for you to conform with what he's saying. So you always have to look for what God is saying. If you need a blessing, look for an instruction from God. If you want a blessing, don't sit there and say, God will bless me anyway. God will bless me anyway. God will bless me anyway. But nobody will smell nice if you don't do something. When you see someone smelling nice, means they've done something. They have to put perfume, deodorant, something. Because naturally, it doesn't happen. By nature, blessings don't just come. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, verse 1, 2, 3, all the way to 10, he spoke about blessed are they that hunger and thirst. Blessed are they. So you must be doing something to see the blessing. You don't do nothing to see the blessing. If you, if you, do, if you don't do anything, you don't see anything. That's why, listen, listen. I think your being here is the first step to see the hand of God in 2024. As I round up, we are going to pray in a minute. Never outsource the demand of your blessing to a man of God. That he should do it for you for God to bless you. No, you yourself take responsibility. Start reaching out to God. Calling on the name of God and listen to his words that he will send from a sent servant. Because most words that bring blessing are words of instructions. I believe, listen to me brothers and sisters, if God is really speaking to you, by now you have heard something that he says, do, don't do, do, don't do. That's the way God will bless you. So if after here, you don't take a step based on what you have heard, don't expect to see anything. But I have a feeling life is visiting somebody. New life, new life, new life, new life, new life, new life, new life. Oh, I heard somebody shouting, amen. New life. New life, new life. New life. Somebody say new life. Shall we rise to our feet? Thank you for listening to this message by David Entry. We pray you have been strengthened and enlightened. You can connect with David Entry on all relevant social media platforms, including Instagram and LinkedIn. You can also hear many more messages from David Entry on all relevant streaming platforms and the Carriage Church app. Don't forget to like and share the message. Be blessed.